All right, y'all, we're about to do something a little different today. We're about to do something a little different than under Black History Month. We're about to learn about some black history told to us by a white person. Now, you might think, like, how come a white person is telling this? Well, heck, she found out some truth in regards to American history that may have been whitewashed for centuries. So we're about to watch this video. It's a very interesting one. It's multiple videos, actually, and it's fun to learn and listen to. So... I learned some stuff. I think y'all gonna learn some stuff too that might shock you and you're gonna be wondering why wasn't this stuff taught to us in school? Y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Hello and welcome to episode two of White People Did Not Invent That. I am your host, Tori. Let's get started. You can thank Henry Sampson for the cell phone. So this is Granville T. Woods, and he invented the electric railway system, uh, telephone transmitters, and roller coasters. You can thank Augustus Jackson for ice cream. I couldn't find a picture of him, though. This is Otis Boykin, and he created pacemaker controls. Robert Fleming Jr., he invented the guitar. The guitar was invented by a black man. And guess what else was? Rock and roll. GT Sampson, he invented the clothes dryer. I couldn't find a picture of him either. I looked everywhere. This is RB Spikes, and he invented the automatic gear shift. And you see Steve Henson right here? He invented ranch dressing. Now, what, what, what's crazy is I saw a video of another female content creator, some a Caucasian woman on, on TikTok, and she was like, Oh man, I was trying to find something in regards to white culture, and this isn't to be racist at all. This ain't what this is. But just listen. She was like, I was trying to find evidence of white culture, and she was like, I, I know what? Ranch. Ranch. Ranch had to be invented by a white person. And then she looked it up to only find out that, nope, ranch was indeed invented or created by a black man. Pressing. And there's more, if not limited to locks, hairbrushes, fountain pens. Stuff people use every single day. Like seriously, this is about inventions obviously, but why wasn't this stuff taught to us in school? What was taught to you in school in regards to Black History Month? I'm gonna tell you what I was taught. I was taught about slavery. I was taught about the fight for freedom and segregation. That was just about it. That was it. I wasn't taught about the inventors that created things that we use every single day. Why they didn't teach about this stuff? Super soaker water guns. Oh, I knew that. Fire escape ladders and even guided missiles. Wow. I got plenty more. Stay tuned for part three. Wow, we learning something today. Well, hello and welcome to a special episode that I want to call Black People Made Rock and Roll. Let's begin. So let's start with Ruth Brown. Wow. She was one of the first artists in Atlantic Records, and it was because of her talent that the record label became as big as it was. And she took on a lot of legal battles so her and other artists can have rights to their royalties. Thanks. This is Sister Rosetta Thorpe, and she was known as the godmother of rock and roll on a global scale mm. because she introduced electric blues to the UK in the 1960s, and she was one of the first black artists to tour with white counterparts, and so she directly influence Elvis Presley. Mm. There's Little Richard, who declared himself as the queen of rock and roll, and he was one of the first artists in rock and roll to challenge gender norms, mm. and he directly influenced artists like Elton John and David Bowie. Nice. So this is Bo Diddley, and he was credited for making the essential beat in rock and roll music, which consisted of three strokes, a rest, and then two strokes. Now, this beat was used in his music, and it was later influencing music of Buddy Holly, Bruce Springsteen, U2, and many more, and unfortunately, he did not see royalties during his heyday. So this goddess right here, this is Peggy Jones, and her stage name was Lady Bo. She was known as being one of the first female guitar players in a mainstream rock band, and she was very experimental with a lot of new technology in music, and so she's one of the reasons why rock and roll music has evolved. Crazy. So this is Lizzie Douglas, and you may know her stage name as Memphis Minnie, and she's actually the one who wrote one of Led Zeppelin's biggest songs, When the Levee Breaks, oh, and what? she was known to be as good as any man on a guitar. Now, we can't talk about the history of rock and roll without Chuck talking Barry. about Chuck Berry. 
he was known as rock and roll's conceptual genius, and he basically influenced artists like the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, even the Beach Boys. Crazy. And then there's Big Joe Turner, who released his song Shake, Rattle, and Roll. And later on, white artists like Elvis Presley recorded it, and it pretty much became one of the earliest frameworks for the sound of rock and roll. Yep. And so honestly, if you can't tell by now, Black People Made Rock and Roll is more than just a song lyric. Facts. Facts. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Hello and welcome to episode one of White People Did Not Invent That. We're not in order. Don't worry about it. I am your host, Tori. Let's get started. So first we have potato chips. There's golf tees. Golf tees? That's a... Hey, golf is a very, very white sport, but the tees themselves... Invented by a black man. There's automatic elevator doors. Refrigerated trucks. Oh, those are important. You can thank this guy. A home security system. A fold away bed. You can also thank this guy for peanut butter, stains, paints, lotions, and soaps. Yep. You can also thank him for gas masks and the three light traffic light. Yep. You better be saying your thank yous to this guy, because he made the modern toilet. Heck, if it wasn't for him, we might still be outside outside taking craps in the outhouse, in the back house, whatever they used to call it back in the day. He invented lawnmowers. And they're... What? A, a black man invented a lawnmower? That's crazy. There's also, if not limited to, paper, the game of chess. Paper. <laughs> Just, just regular paper, like the, the school paper that we used to write on. The rotary engine, disposable syringes and horseshoes, the printing press and pressure cookers, and fire extinguishers. Wow. The list goes on. Like, <laughs> in recent times, there have become black folks that don't like Black History Month. They're like, why are we giving the shortest month of the year? Other people are saying, you know what? Just take take it away completely. We don't even want it because we're a part of American history. To give us a month and the shortest month, forget about it. Hello and welcome to episode three of White People Did Not Invent That. I am your host, Tori. Let's begin. Let's start it off. Helicopters. You can go ahead and thank George for the ultraviolet camera. Really? Gloria Chisholm, she made protective eyewear for pilots. Yep. Sarah Boone, she invented the ironing board. Yeah, you know what? I always thought the ironing board was invented by a black woman. I don't know why. Y'all remember that hand crank pencil sharpener yeah. in school? I used to love that pencil sharpener. I, w I was hoping my pencil would go dull so I can use that sharpener in the classroom. They were the best. They used to kind of sharpen a pencil at a weird angle but still that was john lee love there's also ice cream scoops and fruit juicers too wow and there's also if not limited to defrosters curtain rods lawn sprinklers street sweepers horse riding saddles i bet some of y'all didn't see that one coming she i did horse riding saddles it makes sense that they say the original cowboys were actually black. That's what I heard. What was that last one? Oh, yeah. Rock and roll music. Yeah, we I told you. I told you. We can keep this going forever. <laughs> that we can. Well, hello again, and welcome to episode four. Yeah, we can keep this thing going for a little minute. And we going to keep this thing rolling because towards the end, she's going to be talking about the backlash that she is receiving from having these type of conversations and she handles it so well it's more it's just as important as it is to get this information out there it's important for her to talk about this stuff in regards to some of the hate that she is receiving just for talking about this stuff folks is really uh mental of white people did not invent that i am your host tori let's begin you can thank osborne dorsey for doorknobs and doorstops there's Philip P. Downing for the letterbox. This is Jerry Lawson, and he invented gaming cartridges and one of the first gaming systems altogether. If you like Jack Daniels whiskey, then you better be thanking Nathan Green because he made the recipe. Mm. This is Mary Patrice Davidson, and she invented sanitary pads and toilet tissue holders. 
You can thank Thomas L. Jennings for modern dry cleaning. There's also the world's first supercomputer. There's Charles Richard Patterson, who's one of the first manufacturers of automobiles. There's Benjamin T. Montgomery for steamboat propellers. It's amazing to see just how creative these people were during the times they were. Because back then, times was tough for a black person, a man or woman. But for them to be able to push through all that stuff and still create the things that they created, that white folks and everybody else benefited off of, that, this stuff that they're naming, this is stuff that the whole world uses, not just America. Come on now. Lewis here invented the carbon filament of the light bulb. And beautiful Patricia invented probes for laser cataract removal surgery. Oh, just wait, I got more. <laughs> she does. She does. So guys, it's Black History Month, and this is a very important month. So for the rest of February, I'm going to be covering a lot of influential figures in Black history, along with very important events in Black history like the Civil Rights Movement. I'm sure I've lost people already. That wouldn't shock me. Yet here you are. Black history is super important, and if you don't like it, I don't really care. <laughs> I already have a decent list of people that I want to cover for the month, but if there's any figure or event that you want me to cover, please put it in the comments. I would be happy to discuss it. And if black history scares you or makes you mad, I don't really care. I know that's right. One thing, one thing I can appreciate about the fact that this individual right here is doing this is that she knows oppression being the fact that she's a part of the LGBT community. She has to fight against it all day, every day for who knows how long, right? Maybe her entire life. So it takes people usually that can go through or have been through oppression to really understand oppression and do the research, not just for themselves, but to understand what other people have dealt with or going through. Well, white people in America have always had the audacity when it came to whitewashing history. But first, let's go into what is whitewashing? Well, the dictionary says whitewashing refers to when white people document history in a way to portray the past to increase prominence and impact of white people, while also minimizing and misrepresenting history of non-white people. Mm. Minimize or misrepresenting history history of non-white people whitewashing there's only that word is there black washing yellow washing pink washing I don't, I don't know if there is but there is white washing and like I said this isn't about being against anyone this is just truth this is history learn it don't get mad at it know it for what it is move forward be better people all of us I may have already upset some people, but this is documented history. So if you don't like it, you probably didn't get a good grade in history. <laughs> Let's look and see how deep this rabbit hole goes. I bet it goes deep. I'm going to piss y'all off. <laughs> I mean, even back in the 17th century, pilgrims were arriving to America smelling like absolute s And quite honestly, the Native Americans just wanted them to get their s together for that. Back in those days, bathing was super uncommon up until the 18th century for Western Europeans. And so there was a lot to learn. And there's some people who would have the argument that it's a new world. They're not able to bathe properly. But this practice went all the way up to the monarchy. The king of France, he only had three baths in his entire life. You, you did see where that black man had invented soap, right? <laughs> You're like, man, hold on, wait a minute. Stuff getting a little raunchy around here. We need to start um, taking care of this issue. This is, we ain't supposed to smell like this. And this was common. I mean, Jesus. And also, speaking of Native Americans, you remember when white people called them cannibals? Well, let's go into the truth. Mm. You know who were really the cannibals back then? The white slave owners. And let's go into documentation on it. Now, this book talks about the history of slavery in the U.S. and the documented consumption of enslaved people. These accounts came from enslaved people themselves, such as Harriet Jacobs and Frederick Douglass. 
And so white owners were literally consuming their enslaved people. And it was documented from the 16th century all the way to the 19th century. It's been documented far too long to be erased from history books. Yes, yes. You see, see, some of the things in regards to our history in this country, we're talking about the history of America, will make people so uncomfortable to hear it. Ooh, they're either going to start hating the source that they heard it from, or they're just going to click off, turn off. Uh, I got to close my ears. I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to... Okay, be part of the problem instead of the solution. Now, if you're scared to have all this taught in schools, there's a bigger problem here. Facts. When it comes to American history, the question comes down to, are you wanting to just stay comfortable or do you actually want to learn? And the problem with this is that there's a lot of white people that don't want to face this reality in schools, and so that's why they're scared of critical race theory. And the reason why they're scared of it is because they're going to learn stuff about their ancestors and about their bloodline that they're not going to like. They'll have to question themselves and their actions. They'll have to question their parents, their grandparents, Mm -hmm. their entire family line. And quite honestly... There's a lot of people not ready to do that. Oh, yes. Every every white person that I know. And like I said, we're not talking bad upon nobody. We're just learning here. But every white person I know has some dark history amongst their family. They have told me stories of their grandparents, their great-grandparents. It gets crazy. But the further down the line you travel or the further back in time you go, The worst the stories can get. Looking up documented history is something I always recommend, even if my platform didn't exist. So to the PSA to all the really, really scared people in my comments, do better. That's it. That's it. That's all we're all asking for is to do better. Remember, racism don't exist. Y'all sleep bull calling me a n all that? Hi. You know, if you're the guy in a video like that, and then you're on the internet, and you see that video play, and immediately when it ends, you see my face pop up, you should be worried. But anyway, so Collegeville, Pennsylvania, 29th and 113th, the Dunkin' Donuts slash gas station, that young lady who recorded the video works there. According to her, it started when she was working, and he came in through the door and ran into her. He was in a hurry and, like, bumped into her, and she said, hey, you ran into me, and his response was to start hurling racial slurs at her. But not just that. He also followed that up with, I will hang you outside of this store. The white man said to the young black woman. That prompted her to start recording, and when she did, you saw what happened. He walked up and punched her in the back of the head, resulting in her going to the hospital and finding out she had a concussion. So, Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Who is this? Because some police officers would very much like to have a conversation with him. That, look at that. Y'all sleep bull calling me a n- all that? <laughs> that don't make no kind of sense. All she did was like, hey, yo, dude, you bumped into me. Then he start hurling racial slurs at her and punches her in the back of her head and tells her that he will hang her outside of that store. This happened last year. But yet racism don't exist. Remember that. Okay, we need to talk about this just for a minute, okay? So I started the Black Inventor series a few days ago, and I have to say, these last few days have been very informative. Check out what this comment says. It says, you are having an impact. Hence, they're feeling some type of way. Don't let them derail you from your path. We appreciate you. See? You go to her comment sections and you will see a mixture of love and hate. Informative but sad. The reason why I say that is because my normal history content is talking about problematic people in history that shouldn't be idolized, blah, blah, blah. And so this is the first time that I'm concentrating solely on black history. Mm -hmm. It's really funny and convenient that the second I do that, I get the most hate that I've ever gotten on this platform. But yet, people say racism don't exist anymore. 
In the last few days, I have dealt with people calling me a race trader, a turncoat, a um, people giving a lot of homophobic insults towards me. And as of yesterday, I had a stalker. Of course. All because I am giving credit where it's due. Ain't that crazy? That ain't that crazy. What she's doing is a positive thing. There is nothing wrong with giving credit to the people that made cell phones or pencil sharpeners or the electric sto or the stove top or the ironing board. Giving credit to those people. What? And yet they want to spew all that hatred towards her. What does that tell you? It speaks a lot to their character, doesn't it? And I'm not saying there is in a certain race. I'm saying there is to those individuals. That's what blows my mind the most. And these are the same people that have told me that racism doesn't exist anymore and that we need to move on. <laughs> Just a newsflash. If you're upset that I'm talking about black history, then you're racist. Facts. If I talk about black inventors and you get upset and insult me because I don't talk about white inventors, you're racist. Facts. That's like saying um, <laughs> black lives matter. No, all lives matter. We're not talking about all lives. Not in that moment. Obviously, that movement was jacked up and turned into something that shouldn't have been. But understand the argument here. And so clearly, I've definitely pinched a nerve for a certain demographic on this app. Uh -huh. And to that demographic that won't stop bullying me, keep in mind, you can bully me all you want. You really can. I mean, you can try. And if you guys think that you can bully me into not talking about black history anymore, Holy crap, you are solely mistaken. <laughs> and the beauty of this platform is I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can post what I want. Facts. I can call you out on my platform. Facts. I can delete any ignorant comment that I choose to. Preach. I can easily block you. Tell them. I can report your comments or your posts about me. Tell them. That's the beauty of choices. I can do whatever the fuck I want. And you know what I want to do? I want to talk about black history. So if these window lickers really, really want a war with me, I'll give one. It's ridiculous. I'm telling you, there are people that is watching my reaction right now that's upset that I'm doing this video. I will probably lose them as a subscriber. Do you think I care? You can go ahead and see your way out of here. You don't got to tell me you're leaving don't care if this is bothering you check yourself remember racism don't exist hi you know if you're the guy in a video like that and then you're on the internet and you see that video play and immediately when it ends you see my face pop up you should be worried but anyway so collegeville pennsylvania 29th and 113th, the Dunkin' Donuts slash gas station. That young lady who recorded the video works there. According to her, it started when she was working and he came in through the door and ran into her. Mm -hmm. He was in a hurry and like bumped into her. And she said, hey, you ran into me. And his response was to start hurling racial slurs at her. But not just that. He also followed that up with, I will hang you outside of this store. The white man said to the young black woman, that prompted her to start recording, and when she did, you saw what happened. He walked up and punched her in the back of the head, resulting in her going to the hospital and finding out she had a concussion. So, Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Who is this? Because some police officers would very much like to have a conversation with him. That, look at that. Y'all sleep well, follow me a n all that? That don't make no kind of sense. All she did was like, hey, yo, dude, you bumped into me. Then he start hurling racial slurs at her and punches her in the back of her head and tells her that he will hang her outside of that store. This happened last year. But yet racism don't exist. Remember that. That's it. We made it to the end of this video. 
y'all again this video was not meant to trigger anyone this was just us getting an opportunity to learn some truths as well as taking a little course on history right now i'm gonna leave it up to y'all to drop your comments and your opinions down below y'all know time is like this video hit that like button hit that subscribe button stay tuned for more as always you can follow your boy on the gram and twitter at all the kicks and i'm gonna catch you guys in the next one see ya